make haste, O God, to deliver me. redeemed his people. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice. because he inclined his ear to me. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of the grave laid hold on me. Then I called on the name of the Lord. For you have delivered my soul from death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Uh, At our school, uh, we have a special uh, choir, a singing group, uh, called Joined in Jesus. Uh, And at this time, we invite uh, them to come forward and to sing.
The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday in Lent is written in the 31st chapter of the book of Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. O Lord, have mercy on us. The epistle reading, the letter to the Hebrews, the fifth chapter. Every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. O Lord, have mercy on us. Reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, We want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. Now when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. For whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. 
O Lord, have mercy on us. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is put away. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins.
In the name of Jesus, amen. James and John, two of Jesus' disciples, came up to him and asked, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. The question, the request, is totally out of place totally an inappropriate thing to ask because it reveals a total misunderstanding of who Jesus is, of what his ministry is, of what he has come into the world to do. Now certainly, and to their credit, James and John know who Jesus is. They know that he is the Son of God. They know that he is the Savior of the world. They believe and trust in him, and that is good. But they think, mistakenly, that following Jesus is uh, a way for them to gain a way for them to benefit themselves in this life and in the life of the world to come. Basically, they think that Jesus owes them. They have followed Jesus faithfully, perhaps for two or three years even at this point. And so they believe they are entitled to the reward, to sit at the side of Jesus in heaven forever. And Jesus says, you don't even know what you're talking about. Now certainly the other disciples are angry with them that they would be so uh, bold and and presumptuous uh, because they're basically saying, hey Jesus, we're not only your disciples, but we are the best of your disciples. Certainly the others don't want to hear that. But what does Jesus say to them? Are you able to drink the cup I drink? Are you able to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And when Jesus speaks here of the cup and his baptism, he's not referring back to his baptism by John in the Jordan River. That has already taken place. The cup and the baptism here are references to his death, to his suffering, to everything that he endures leading to and upon the cross to atone for the sins of the world. And they ought to know this. If they had been paying attention, Jesus had told them this that they are following him, that he is going to Jerusalem, not to glory in an earthly sense, not to victory, not to wealth, not to fame, not to power, not to an earthly kingdom or anything that an earthly uh, ruler, anything that an earthly kingdom entails, but he is going to suffer. He is going to die. He is going to give his life as a ransom for many. And if they are truly his disciples, they must follow him. Not to glory, not to fame, not to fortune, not to earthly power, but they must follow him to death. And so they say, yeah, we're able to follow. And Jesus says, yes, you will. You will drink my cup. You will be baptized with my baptism. 
And we know that all of the uh, disciples of Jesus, except one, are martyred. That is, they are executed. They themselves are killed because of their faithful confession of Jesus. Only one of them reaches what we would call old age and retirement. And even he lives his last days alone in exile because of his faithful confession of Christ. It is a reminder to them and thus also a reminder to us that being a Christian, that following Jesus, believing in him, being a faithful member of his church on earth is not a pathway to earthly gain. If you want to be rich and famous in this world, being a Christian is not the way to go about it. Far from it. As we have heard several times throughout this season of Lent, Jesus calls his disciples and says to them, take up your cross and follow me. To follow Jesus in this life, in this world, is to share in his suffering. It is to share in his death. We follow him to the death of this world in order that we may follow him to his resurrection. Now, be sure about this, be clear about this, there is the resurrection. There is the life eternal. There are the blessings of God in this world and in the life of the world to come. But there are no shortcuts here. You don't get to skip over the cross in order to get to Easter, in order to get to the resurrection. You don't get to skip over the suffering and death of this life and go directly to the life of the world to come. Uh, it is, and I think for, for many Christians, a misconception and even a temptation uh, to think that God calls us as his people and therefore the life of a Christian must be easy. And it must be victory after victory, success after success, wealth and prosperity all over the place, having everything we want, nothing we don't. As if life were one unending party. But it is not so. Uh, and so the, we, we just sang the hymn, and I think it's uh, you know, one of the greatest hymns to remind us of this reality. And the true danger in this is that as Christians, when we experience suffering in this life, particularly if we are experiencing persecution, that is, if we see the wicked prosper, if we see those who are opposed to Christ, opposed to his word, opposed to his church, and they are the ones who are rich and famous, they are the ones who are wealthy and powerful, they are the ones who appear to be succeeding in the world while we are suffering and failing, the great temptation for us is to say that God himself has failed that God does not care about us, that God does not love us, that God is not hearing our prayers, and that maybe this whole following Jesus thing isn't even worth it. I wonder perhaps if Jesus had not said these things to us, if Jesus had not taught his disciples clearly 
about these things, about uh, going to the cross, about taking up your cross and following me, uh, about enduring these sufferings rather than seeking glory, about living not to be served but to serve. If we, hadn't, if we didn't know these things, we might think the, the, the Christian church and the Christian faith was a failure, a waste of time. Why would anyone volunteer for such poverty and weakness and suffering in this world? Why would anyone volunteer if there is no gain, no benefit? But thanks be to God that our Lord Jesus does teach these things to his disciples. He does put all of this in perspective for us. That there is suffering before glory. There is cross uh, before the empty tomb. There is death before the resurrection. There is all the pain and suffering and evils of this life before we come into the eternal kingdom of God, uh, where all pain and suffering and sin and death is done away with, every tear wiped from our eyes, and we dwell with Christ in his glory forever. It is coming, it is assured, it is our hope, but it is not yet. It is not here, it is not now. Uh, in a sense, the church, we, we do this each year. And we speak about these things each year because each year on the church calendar, we have the season of Lent before we have the season of Easter. That is, there is this time of sorrow, this time of suffering, this time of repentance, this time of self-denial, Right, of giving up the pleasures of the flesh uh, in order to focus on the things of God. We follow Jesus to the cross. We hear the, the account of his suffering and death again each year before we come to Easter, before we come to the, to the glory and the joy of the resurrection. Our songs now are sad because the life of this world is sad. Easter is coming. The joy of the resurrection is coming. The celebration, the shouts of praise, the great feast, it is coming. But it is not here yet. Our temptation as human beings, and even as Christians, we want to skip over Lent and go directly to Easter. Just like we want to skip over Advent and go directly to Christmas, just like we want to skip over uh, all of the hard work uh, in whatever our vocation, whatever our calling in life, to get directly to the gain and the benefit of things, just as we want to skip over death and go directly to heaven. But it cannot be. It cannot be. And it's okay. Because Jesus is with us. Jesus is with his people, with his gifts and blessings, not only in victory, not only in prosperity, not only in wealth and fame, but Jesus is with us in suffering. Jesus is with us in poverty. Jesus is with us in obscurity. Jesus is with us in death. So that we may be with him in his resurrection. Go back and sing the hymn uh, again some, sometime later today or, or this week. Right? It, it confesses these things so beautifully and so clearly. Yes, in this life, there is suffering. We take up the cross and follow Jesus to his death. But we also follow him into resurrection and everlasting life. And we pray God's blessing upon us. We pray God's help 
faithfully to believe and trust in Jesus, to follow him through the, through the hard times, the bad times, in order that we may also follow with him into the glory that is yet to come. God never yet forsook in need the soul that trusted him indeed. May God grant this unto us all. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness. We bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of your faithful people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us. Enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are given to your service. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, before you, every knee in heaven and earth shall bow. Grant courage that your children may confess your saving name, even when facing persecution from a fallen world that is hostile to your word. Remember your faithful people who sacrifice much and even face death rather than dishonor you or deny the faith. By your Spirit, strengthen them in faith. Support them in confession of the truth. Comfort them with the hope of the resurrection and the life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, grant your mercy and grace to your people in their many and various callings. Bless our public servants, our armed forces, law enforcement, and all those who protect us. Sustain them in courage and honor in defending our land. Bless our elected officials. Endow them with wisdom and integrity to uphold justice. Bless all people in their particular vocations, prospering their work and allowing them to serve their neighbor in works of love, according to your command. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, you continually bless the earth to make it fruitful, bringing forth in abundance what is needed for the support of our lives. Grant us favorable weather and bless our labors, that the increase of plants and animals upon the earth and the minerals under the earth may be harvested for the benefit of your people. Make us ever mindful of your blessings, that we may return to you our praise and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, look down from heaven. Behold, visit, and relieve your servants who are sick or suffering any distress of body or soul. Have mercy upon Zachary, David, Elaine, Harlow, Carla, Harlan, Dorothy, and Glenn, Bobby, Alice, Brenda, Shirley, Rhonda, Marcy, Sherry, Susan, Mary, Sharon, Gloria, Stephen, Randy, Joanna, Jay, Bev, Harvey, Bob, Jennifer, and Kathy, Ruby, Bernice, Eunice, Emma, Marvin and Dorothy, Mabel, Gerald and Bonnie. Look upon them with the eyes of your mercy. Give them comfort and confidence in you. Defend them from every danger to body and soul. Keep them in peace and safety. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and most merciful God, you bring us through suffering and death with our Lord Jesus Christ to enter with him into glory. We pray for the families of Oscar and all those of your saints who have been called to rest. Grant us grace at all times to acknowledge and accept your holy and gracious will, to remain in the true faith, and to find peace and joy in the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and everlasting God, for our many sins, we justly deserve eternal condemnation. In mercy you sent your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who won for us forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. Grant us true repentance, that we may ever be dead to sin and raised up by your life-giving forgiveness. 
Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may be ever watchful and live true and godly lives in your service. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power. Grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning once again, and welcome uh, to all of you. Please do take a look at the bulletin and the announcements uh, that are in there, uh, particularly the upcoming schedule of services. Uh, we are getting to, uh, well, two weeks from this morning uh, is Easter Sunday. So um, this week, uh, the Wednesday evening uh, Lenten service uh, includes the uh, examination of confirmands, the, the questioning prior to confirmation. Uh, next weekend um, is Palm Sunday. Uh, we do have the Saturday evening service and the Sunday morning. Um, the Saturday evening service includes baptism. The Sunday morning service on Palm Sunday includes confirmation. Uh, and we have uh, a class of four confirmands uh, this year, uh, diligently preparing uh, for that date. Uh, and then not this week, but next week is, uh, or the week following is Holy Week. Uh, note the service times and dates for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, uh, and then the Easter uh, services, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. 
Uh, thank you once again to everybody who participated in the, uh, in the fish fry. Uh, there's some notes from the youth group about uh, Easter breakfast um, in two weeks, confirmation reunion uh, next week. Uh, there's some things looking forward to the, uh, to the picnic. Uh, the widows group uh, meets this week, Thursday night in the meeting room uh, at school. Um, so make a note of that. Um, uh, note the, I, I've been announcing for a few weeks the adult information class. Uh, that will be meeting Wednesday nights uh, in the meeting room over at school. Uh, not this week, but starting next week, March 27th. So I will be trying to contact all of the participants directly, but uh, if you're interested in, uh, in attending uh, that, uh, that class or getting to know some of our prospective new members, uh, please plan on joining us Wednesday nights beginning March 27th uh, in the meeting room. All right, uh, also note the, uh, the insert on the, uh, the Easter lilies. If you'd like to purchase an Easter lily uh, for use in our church this year, uh, please have this form uh, in by next Sunday, by Palm Sunday, uh, so that our flower committee can uh, make purchases and uh, arrange the flowers uh, as, uh, as needed. All right, are there any other announcements today? All right, have a good week. Um.